Hi, I'm Craig from Startup Stories, and I'm here with uh, Clyde, one of the co-founders of Karma, uh, to find out his startup story. Um, so, Clyde, tell me a little bit about um, your startup. So, Karma is a wiki of open letters about people uh, and a social network where the world creates your profile. So, think about a cross between Wikipedia and Facebook. Okay. So, the idea is that on Karma you can learn about people by reading letters they have received from others, or you can write your own letters about the people that have affected your life. Okay. So our mission is for Karma to become the best way to learn and write about any person. Okay, so how did you come to the idea of Karma? What, what prompted you to, just to start it up? Well, my brother and I, uh, who's a co-founder of Dane, uh, is, is a couple of years younger than me, and we were sitting around the dinner table one day just talking about this concept that had been rattling around in his head for some time uh, in some vague terms. And we teased it out a bit more over dinner. Uh, I went to bed that night and Dane wrote, he was up at four in the morning, kind of writing this long, uh, long form email, kind of breaking the concept down into more solid stages. And I woke up in the morning, read that email. Dane got up and by lunchtime that day, we decided to build this company. Uh, it just seemed like the value that could be uncovered by using tried and uh, proven methods of crowdsourcing information but applying it in a very careful way to humans, uh, the value could be significant. So we started that journey early on. The first few months were going out into the Canberra community and meeting with anyone who would say yes to a coffee, uh, asking them to shoot holes in the concept to give us some feedback and just refining how we were communicating the idea. Um, and that was super useful. Uh, it was A couple of things came home from that experience. One is how generous people were with their time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very, very rare for someone to turn down a meeting and just mm -hmm. that everyone would say yes, come and tell me about your startup and I'll let you know honestly what I think and a lot of really good stuff, uh, valuable kind of feedback came out of those interactions early on. Uh, so we did that for a few months, we then found a co-founder, Monish Parajuli, he's a Nepalese born and raised uh, Australian now, you know, he's quite an experienced software developer. Uh, mm -hmm. My brother Dane has got a degree in uh, computer science, so that's his background. So we started building the product uh, early in 2015 and we launched a closed invitation only beta in September. Mm -hmm. I managed to get some funding from some Sydney tech investors in June last year. That's great. They gave us a runway. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And now we have 650 odd users and about 760 letters in Karma. We still closed invitation only beta. We're hoping mm -hmm. to open up in about June this year. Okay, well that's great. So you you actually went quite quickly from coming up with the idea to building it to actually getting some backing for it. So yeah. was that was that your plan originally, or is that it just happened that way? It was our plan. I mean, we bootstrapped as far as we could, and then we, we knew at what point we were going to essentially run out of money and need to find additional funding. Uh, and I think in hindsight, we were quite spoiled with how easily it was we were able to raise. Mm -hmm. uh, subsequent to that initial raise, we found it quite tough going, and we'll get into that later. But uh, I wrote a few blogs about our journey and karma as a concept and potential use cases, and kind of teasing out the value propositions. Uh, and on the basis of those blogs, I was contacted on Facebook by a uh, CEO of a RFID company oh, in, yes. in Sydney. And it was a really short kind of direct message. He's also an ex-South African who lives in Sydney now. He just said, I'll be reading about Karma, can you send me a term sheet? Um, and from there, things move very quickly. Yeah, so I was like, yes, we can. Um, like, like, that happens to nobody. I know, I know. And this has now become more and more apparent to us how rare that was. And as novice entrepreneurs, um, like I said, I think we were spoiled early on. And maybe that coloured just how misaligned our... Uh, perception of how difficult it was going to be to raise future mm -hmm. sums. So anyway, we went down to Sydney, uh, when I say we, the three of us, they and Monish and I, um, we pitched to Kevin and he put together like a panel of friends. Uh, they were also right. uh, in a similar space, they were interested in the concept. And by the drive back to Canberra, we got a call to say we'd like to put in um, to extend your own way. So that was right. good. Yeah, there was a big kind of tick and uh, it, gives us, it gave us a a runway from June last year that's still going. Uh, we've got a few more months of runway to go. And that just allowed us to go full time, all three of us, because up until that point, I was doing some other things, some writing jobs, and just kind of keep the company funded. Uh, it also allowed us to bring in two contractors, so we brought in uh, two more programmers. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them is from the ANU, he's a uh, master's student in 
uh, computer science and machine learning, and the other one was a contractor in Kosovo. So he was the only remote employee. And just allowed us to just build the company really quickly, uh, and build the product, I should say, and refine the tech features uh, to the point where we could actually start onboarding people in September, late September last year. Yeah, no, that's great. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, again, it's a very, very rare story to yeah. have yeah. that go yeah. so easily. Yeah, yeah. so that's good. Um, so what challenges did you face in, mm -hmm. in setting up the company and building up to where it is? I think you know, the early challenges are kind of convincing yourself and friends and family that this is a good decision. Mm -hmm. you know, we, when I say we, Dane, myself and Monash are all immigrants. Uh, I came here, just I've been in Canberra now, uh, just over 14 years. And I originally born and raised in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what that's done is give us a idea of risk that's probably different to a lot of Australians. I think the risk is relative when you've come from a third world country and you come to Canberra and essentially you feel like you're in paradise, you won the jackpot and you swing for the fence and if you fail you land in paradise and you're surrounded by opportunities everywhere you look. Yes. Uh, and I think that trying to explain to friends of mine who you know, who had left rugby and gone into very traditional finance or legal backgrounds or gone into commentary, that I was going to go and start a startup and take all the money from rugby and pour it into this thing. Um, I felt that the, the amount of skepticism about the idea was a challenge. Uh, you know, like people are saying, you're crazy, like, this is highly risky endeavor. And of course they're right, it is highly risky, but uh, I felt like I could not work on this, and I know Dane feels the same way. Anything else we tried to do, this was going to be too much of a distraction. And I think that's something that I've, as the journey's gone on, and you do face challenges, I think that's something that's come home to us more and more. So you need to really believe in the problem you're trying to solve, because inevitably you're going to have some bricks hit you in the face. And when they do, if you know that it's worth it, uh, and you really believe in what you're trying to do, it's much easier to weather that storm. Yeah, and, and how do you actually articulate that problem you're actually solving? Yeah, okay, so I think if you think about with the world that we live in now, we really live in this world of crowdsourced data. It's easier for us to learn about our neighbours, or rather uh, our restaurants than it is to learn about our neighbours. This is a really strange thing. You know, there's so much information about people that's available. And early on it was really confusing to us why this didn't really exist. You know, you and I are meeting for the first time today. If you Google my name, you'll find some information about me on Facebook or LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, and so on. But the problem with all those platforms is that all the information about me is entirely controlled by me. So it allows for us to design these highly curated personal advertisements.